Well, good morning. Pastor Bill asked me to greet you. He's not going to be here this morning because uh, he's been struggling with some flu-like symptoms and went and got a COVID test and that came back positive. So, uh, so he's going to rest and recuperate. And we are going to pray for his, his quick recovery. And we're going to remain in faith because it is easy. Uh, it is human nature to respond with worry and anxiety and, oh my gosh, COVID, COVID, COVID. However, this is not our heavenly nature. Uh, Pastor Bill has been working his way through a series on the kings of Israel. So I want to start off with what King David has to say about fear. Uh, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. That's Psalm 34. Uh, verses 4 and 5. Uh, the next slide says this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The one thing that I absolutely do not want to do this morning is to shame anybody or to uh, come across as scolding you for, for having a moment of anxiety. A moment of fear because COVID is a real thing and it is scary okay I have dear friends who who have had loved ones die from it and so I don't want to come across as you just need to have more faith and, and you know God's mad at you for not having enough faith to come against this this thing that's not what I want to do I want to encourage you to to find a Find a scripture, find something that you can hold on to as a foundation of your faith for when you are faced with an opportunity to fear. So the strength that we have to combat fear is the knowledge that God's desire for our life is health and strength and peace. And this is where we must lay our foundation. Every time that Jesus was asked to heal somebody, he did. There's not a single reference that Jesus left someone in illness or disease uh, if they asked for him, for him to heal them. To Jesus, health and healing are part of salvation, and it's no harder to attain than being born again. He showed us in Matthew 9. Uh, but Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he said, Why do you harbor evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But so that you might know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, then he said to the paralytic, get up and pick up your mat and go home. The paralyzed man needed to be healed, but Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, pick up your mat and go. And he got healed, and he picked up his mat, and he went. And to Jesus, it's all the same. It, it's your sins are forgiven and your body's made whole. So who in here is born again? We're all born again because of our faith in Jesus Christ. That we, that we heard from, from a, a preacher or we read it in the Bible. Through God's grace, by your faith and your confession and your obedience, we are born again. All things in the kingdom of God are accessed the same way. God has provided for us health and peace and provision. And it is up to us to access it by faith and our confession and our obedience. And that faith comes from God's word, which is our strong foundation. Our faith is built in the understanding that God cannot lie. God loves us. He wants for us the best. And so our faith, as we are surrounded by these concepts that God is good, and we read in his word, this allows us to build a confidence in God. And that's where our faith comes from. Then we begin to access it through how we respond, how we respond to opportunities to be afraid. I'm going to read uh, several verses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is a foundation of what God says about us. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land, the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. 
You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that your enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction and they will flee seven ways. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. And as he promised you on an oath, if you keep the commands of all the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, the crops of your ground, in the land that he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty, to send rain on your land in the season and bless all the works of your hands. He will lend, you will lend to many nations but borrow from none. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I will give you this day and carefully follow them, then you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. These are the words of the Bible about what God believes about us. So when we have an opportunity to fear about lack or about uh, worry, anxiety, we, we need to go back to our foundation of the Bible. These are the words that God says about us. One more here in Proverbs 3, uh, verse 7 and 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So God absolutely is in favor of us, favor of us living in health and being, uh, being whole. Nourishment to your bones. So when we have an opportunity, uh, when we are presented uh, face to face with uh, with COVID in our in our midst, how are we supposed to respond to that? What is our conduct going to be? We go again to the Bible. Um, you know, there's a lot of lot of opportunity, a lot of social uh, constructs that tell us how how we could or we should conduct ourselves. But let's go to the Bible, Philippians 1:27. Reads, only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come to see you or remain absent, this is Paul writing, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And the faith of the gospel says, I believe the Bible. I believe everything that God has written down, what he believes about me, and I'm going to put myself in agreement with that. I am the head. I'm not the tail. I'm blessed in the city and in the country. And my flocks are blessed. And my storehouses are blessed. And my body is blessed. Because that's what God says about me. Colossians 4, 5, and 6 says, Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. And so... This tells us how to conduct ourselves in the midst of unbelievers, in the midst of the whole world, okay? Um, it's easy to respond from human nature. Well, uh, pastor has COVID, and, I'm, and I hope he does okay, and, and you know, my, my, my best friend's mother died from that two months ago, and I, I don't know, you know, it must just be God's will that some people die and some people don't. And you have to be super careful about statements like that. Because my Bible says that his will is always to heal Jesus, every person that asked him to heal and he did. So that's where I'm going to set my faith. I'm not going to um, close things down. I'm not going to back away. I'm not going to be pushed around by the world or by the devil because of fear, because God is greater than that. Paul is writing, he says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, so that we will know how to respond to each person. If the world sees us full of fear and full of scrambling around, um, attempting to, to make excuse why God is not working, they're not going to want to 
be introduced to this great God of ours. So we are the ambassadors. We are the ones that present and represent God Almighty to the, to the earth, to the world. And uh, I want to always make sure that my God is, is represented as good and, and giving and blessing. Amen. Hebrews 10, verse 22 and 23 says, Let us draw near to God with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. That is, the, that is the kind of the cornerstone. You can have this foundation, but you have to know that the ones that spoke the words in the Bible, he's faithful. He watches carefully over his word to, to bring that to pass. He's just looking for somebody in the, earth, in the earth to agree with him, to agree with his words. When I read that, that uh, uh, God is for me and not against me, I want to set myself in agreement with that. And God says, hey, John down there just said that I'm for him and I'm not against him, so I can work with that. And here we go. Does that make sense? I'm going to take that silence as an amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what is a godly response? A godly response is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Okay. For, uh, and why? For thou art with me. That's it, exactly. Thou art with me. Amen. This is Bible. And because we're born again people, at some point we were presented with God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that who should ever, whosoever should believe in him uh, might not perish but have everlasting life. And we believed that. Okay, that's a scripture in the Bible that we believed in that changed our whole life forever. And I want to attach the same tenacity uh, to other words of God. With, I have no doubt anymore that I'm going to heaven when I die. Okay? Because I believe God's word. So when his word says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because you are with me. I want to believe that with the same effectual belief, belief in my heart that he said he's with me everywhere, even in the shadow of death. I'm giving you a lot to think about this morning, so hallelujah, I'm okay. What if I'm still afraid? I'm here in the shadow of the valley, the valley of the shadow of death, and I am afraid. He said, don't be afraid, but I am afraid. Well, he is still with you. It's not a problem. God's big enough to do it if you're afraid, if you're not afraid. God's big enough. I am in the valley of the shadow of death and I am afraid. He's still with you. No worry about it. What if I don't have faith? If you don't have faith to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and be not afraid, at least be hopeful. I hope that I might be not afraid when I'm encountering the shadow of death. And that's okay too, because Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. It's the evidence of things that are not seen. Faith begins in hope. Okay, Hope is not a solid foundation. Okay, I hope that God will heal Pastor Bill. I hope that, you know, I have enough money at the end of the month. But hope is the beginning of faith, okay? I hope, therefore, I want to seek out what God's Word says about this issue that I'm anxious about. And that's when you go into the Bible and you find out some scriptures. Even if your faith is just a hope, God can nurture that hope into a foundation of faith and then to strength, and then to growth. Here's my notes. I wanted to say victory right there. But faith is not a formula. 
It's not a recipe. It's not if I put A and B and C together, then D will absolutely happen every time. Because God's not that way. Because then you begin to trust in your formula. God gets left out of the equation. That's not what faith is about. Faith is this, is absolutely I have to rely on God and his word and I'm going to dig it out. But that's our foundation. Growth. Not, not necessarily victory. We're aiming for victory and we're hoping for victory. We're planning. I even plan on victory. I plan on tomorrow being better than today. Every day of my life. But it doesn't always happen that way because my faith is growing. So, hallelujah. I wanted to say victory here, but faith is not a formula. Faith is a growing process built on relationship with our Father. The better that relationship is, the better that faith will work all the time. One last thought in 1 Corinthians. This is chapter 15. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying is written, and it will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Uh, go back uh, to number, number 57. Um, when the per perishable has been clothed with the imperishable. This, this means death. Okay? Um, in all of recorded time, only a handful of people have ever left this planet not dying. Okay. Uh, even death is not a thing to be feared. It's the threshold to heaven. You only get into heaven by dying. And that's okay. Every one of us in this room will shed our mortality. Just don't fear it. It will come. But our task, our assignment from Father God is not to fear it. It's to live our life every day as ambassadors of heaven. People do not trust in God, so we have to do that for them. We're going to be the only picture of God that some people ever see. So we have to conduct our lives in such a way that cause people to put their trust in an invisible God. There will always be sickness and lack and pain and problems. Don't deny that they exist. Just don't be impressed by them. Psalm 27.1 the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When you have an opportunity to fear, find a scripture to add to your faith. Go to the computer and type in the search bar, Bible verses for faith. God's promises for me. And you'll find all sorts, all sorts of stuff from the word of God that you can, that you can read and incorporate into your life so that you don't have fear, so that you don't have anxiety. You might still have some of it, but you're building your foundation of faith so that, uh, so that when the opportunity to fear comes and raises its head, you have, some, you have some foundation to stand on. Fear not or do not be afraid is, is in the Bible 365 times. So there is one for every day of the year to do not be afraid. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, I thank you so much that you care so much for us to tell us to not be afraid when there's ample opportunity to be afraid. Thank you, Father God, that you've given us a, a recipe, a a a place for faith to rise up in our hearts. And Lord, we do want to trust you. We want to take you at your word. And so we will continue to, to build our life on your word so that when that opportunity to fear comes, we can say, even though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I don't fear because he is with me. 
Thank you, Father God, for being with us. Lord, we pray for Pastor Bill. We thank you, Father God, that the saint knows things that you can't handle. We pray for him in Jesus' name that he, he recovers quickly. He rests well and is able to accomplish things and, and uh, catch up on some rest. Father God, we thank you for him. And we thank you, Father, for what he means to this church and to his community. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name for his health and his healing in Jesus' name. Father God, for, for all those that are not with us this morning, that uh, for whatever reason have, uh, are at home or, or in another place, we pray for them in Jesus' name too. Father God, that you present yourself to them, open the eyes of their understanding that they may know that you are with them in every situation. We thank you, Father God, that you are good. And your desire is always that we 